Hi, everybody. I am Lisa Johnson, and I'm here with my friend and student, Barbara Doss. Um, and we're just going to be kind of talking a little bit. Um, Barbara is, has joined our healing team, and she's going to be um, working with essential oils and um, things like that. Barbara has many, 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 many talents. So that is not the only thing that she'll be doing for us. Um, so, Barbara, how did you um, find EB? How did you find Energy Balance? Well, I was taking a class from Jogi at the Y, and um, I really liked it. I liked it because it was uh, very therapeutic, and I really needed to go through a lot of restoration and rehab. And uh, anyway, Jogi stopped, Jogi stopped teaching there, and I uh, went to do some teaching elsewhere, and it was difficult for me to go to other places and more expensive, so I continued to stay at the Y. And Elizabeth, uh, who had taken some classes from Lisa, had told me that I should really take her your in our class, that that would really benefit me a great deal. Mm -hmm. And um, I reluctantly agreed. <laughs> I thought, hmm. This just sort of seems like it's going to be really hard, and um, and I wasn't really, I just wasn't really sure. But I, I'm always somebody who, if I'm not sure, I'm going to check it out more. That's just my motto is to do that. So um, I started taking the classes, and I, I liked Lisa, and I liked uh, Todd, both of them so much. They were really worked well as a team, and they quickly became my really good friends. And um, then I did the classes at the Y, and then I went and did the classes over at um, the, um, the yoga school. The yoga school. Mm -hmm. And I could really see that getting into the, getting on the wall and hanging upside down and using bolsters and props and you know and, and, and understanding that no space you make is ever lost. That was extremely big for me. Because I was, I was in my mind thinking, gosh, I'm having to do a lot of work to get this incremental amount of space. Well, do I just start back over and over again? Do I drive back every day and get that incremental amount of space each time? It seemed like I was really being tested um, to really see um, whether this would really be a valuable thing for me. And so I thought, having been to different physical therapists and different massage therapy and uh, the conventional settings, um, which are really restrictive and very, very, you know, you just feel like you're going through a machine most of the time when you go into any of those settings. So you really don't get much personal attention. You get a lot of standardized attention. And so I just thought, I'm just going to take my chances and I'm going to use my intuition, and I'm going to listen to my body, and I'm going to try to do what she suggests that I do. And um, so I did. I did that for. I've been doing this um, now for three years, almost three years, I think. And um, so then I also am a massage therapist. I had worked as an RN for a long time, and had you know more than 30 years, and I was very. Uh, felt like the hospital situations were treatment places, but they were not really healing environments. And that, that if there was any way in the world to keep people out of them and doing well without being in them, that I was going to be involved in those kinds of endeavors. Well, Barbara, that was actually my next question. So um, just a little bit about your background. Um, so your background, you are a nurse, and you did um, nursing for, what, 25 years or longer? No, longer than, I mean, since 1981. Oh, no, since 1980. And, um, but I've done a lot of different kinds of body things in my life. I've done uh, ballet for a long, did it all through my childhood and into my teenage years. And I did, um, and I was a swimmer. And I was also a um, Scottish country dancer. And I did that for probably just five or 10 years. That's interesting. So I always am drawn back to use my body. I'm yeah. not somebody who likes to go for long, um, strenuous hikes, particularly, because I'm, I like to stop and see what's going on everywhere. Mm -hmm. 
that I'm somebody who pretty much stays in constant motion, mm -hmm. except when I'm asleep. And um, so I, I really believe that motion is, uh, and that movement is a very wonderful form of medicine. Mm -hmm. And learning how to move uh, is um, a very important thing. And I know that some people know how to move better than other people. I mean, I've been able to watch people for years, and I have seen that some people can, they know how to move and bend and stretch all at the same time while they're doing work. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Which makes their work look beautiful, too. Yeah. When they're working, they look beautiful working. They look almost like, it's almost like a movie to watch some people move and work. So, and then, you know, when a person is ill, um, most of the time, if you have a sinus problem or a sinus headache, the very worst thing for you to do is stay in bed. Mm -hmm. and the very best thing for you to do is get up as fast as you even start to feel the beginnings of those headaches and begin to go about doing things. Mm -hmm. Be busy, uh, bend over and pick up that thing, you know, look up. Uh, get in the shower and let the steam see you. Let all these things start to make action take place in your body. If you want to get well, you want things to move. Yeah. We're just like a stream. Our body is like a stream, and streams stagnate if they don't move. Mm -hmm. And then they, when they stagnate, they get infections and bacteria building up in their joints and different parts of their body. So movement is the very most basic form of medicine that I know of. Okay. How how do you how how are you integrating the essential oils um, with yoga and with massage? Like how is that? Um, how does that all go together? Well, you know, uh, I've been just fascinated with the oils since the first time somebody introduced me to them, and I thought, what? <laughs> I was really having really icky feet. And uh, I was on them all the time, racing up and down, like the movement that I always do. Or I always pick jobs that were active jobs, not sitting at the desk and writing. And um, so I, uh, my, my feet were really aching. And so a friend of mine who I distribute oils with and have for a long time um, said, try this peppermint. I mean, try this black pepper on the bottom of your feet. Black pepper. Essential oil of black pepper. And I thought, oh, okay. <laughs> what can it harm? Right. I mean, I really didn't feel like I had time to do that. Right. Okay. I went into the bathroom. I was on the nursing floor. I went to the bathroom and I took this bottle of black pepper and I put a drop of it on the bottom of my feet, even through my stockings, my hose, which I had on, and on each foot, right in arching my foot. And then I went back to work and I noticed that my feet were not hurting. They did not ache. Wow. It was such a miraculous wow. little moment for me. But I thought, well, you know, that's strange. Um, and so uh, then I became more and more interested in the oils that, that you know, she, her name is Kat, probably a lot of people know Kat. She does not pay you too. Okay. My young girl, we're good friends. Yeah. And um, so I, uh, you know, begin to spend a lot of time with Kat, and we talked a lot about oils, and we we actually sort of bootlegged oils into the hospital because a lot of times there were long periods of times when a patient could not have another medicine to relieve their pain or their headache or their anxiety or whatever it was. And so I could practice sterile technique and I could, I didn't feel like I needed to go to a class and have somebody teach me how to practice sterile technique since I totally knew it. Mm -hmm. So I practiced sterile technique and I took a bottle and I carefully distributed that oil in places when I knew somebody would help, it would help them. And the results that I got were so shocking, they were astounding. I mean, people who had been to so many doctors that for a disc problem, for example, and they would say, and, and this was, you know, in a psychiatric setting, so I had to always wonder, 
when people would say, this is a miraculous thing, this has made such a difference. All these things that have been done for me for so long did not work, and this did. I had to think, is this a delusion that this person might be having? You know, what is this? It's so real, what they're saying. So really, I had to take it with a kind of uh, objectivity. You know, I mean, I would love to go, oh, I'm so glad I saved you with this oil. I mean, mm-hmm. always want to save somebody from something. Right. But I tried to really maintain um, my objectivity about the situations. And so I kept having it just all the time. It just happened all the time. So that I became rather bold about insisting that I was going to do this no matter what people had to say. Mm-hmm. Because it's really almost beyond my ability to look at somebody who's suffering and not try to help them in some way. Right. And I don't really care too much about policies, especially if I feel like I've done good research and know what I'm doing. Exactly. Yeah. So um, I did. I had read and learned the safe uh, and effective use of essential oils book. And I knew that there were certain people who could not have certain oils. Mm-hmm. And so I only practiced with really totally safe oils. Mostly responsible other, practice. Yeah, yeah. That's very, I'm very responsible. I don't want to hurt somebody, that's for sure. So, um, I mean, I got so that people would always ask me, would you please go down and take care of this um, somebody with an oil, put some oil on this person, they really need it. Mm-hmm. And the doctors started asking me to do it as well. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't know if the administration was happy about it. <laughs> But the doctors were overburdened, really stressed, could not take care of all the people that they had to take care of. And the oils became um, the, um, the, the thing that bridged the gap between conventional medicine and their effectiveness and uh, the people that I was taking care of whose suffering was in my face because I was a bedside nurse, not a desk nurse waiting at the telephone for things. I was right there. Mm-hmm. And it's just not possible to be in someone's face when they're just dying of anxiety, when they're incredibly suffering. It's just impossible to be that. So I always felt like, you know, okay, I might get in trouble for this in some way, somehow, because you seem to be able to get in trouble for anything in your face, no matter what you're doing, That's and no matter how good your intentions are, you exactly. can just be absolutely smacked. So um, I learned a lot in that setting. I really learned a lot. And then I learned a lot from my friend, Kat, who um, was constantly ordering new oils and, and inviting me over to just take a sniff and see what they smell like and, and, and to study them and learn about them and to see where they might be applied to do this and to do that. And so over all of these years of having opportunities to practice it on people, I have learned that, you know, I've made some mistakes. Um, You know, there are things that you really have to be very careful about. You have to really know where your oils are. You don't want to grab a a bottle of clove by mistake and go in and put it on yourself before you get in the shower, unless you want to scald your skin. Yeah. You know? And so when you start to use oils that are out of the really kind of like practitioner, I mean, anyone can learn to practice safe use of oils within a spectrum as long as they operate carefully mm-hmm. and don't become, you know, uh, I mean, you have, to, you have to realize you have to give a lot of respect to the oil exactly. and what it's for. Okay. Or because else, they are very strong, is that right? They are okay. very strong things. They are, they are, in one little bottle can be, you know, like a hundred plants worth of oil. And some oils are really hot. You know, oregano is a hot oil. They could burn your skin. Peppermint. Truly, truly burn yeah. and okay. hurt for okay. a while. That's good to know. Yes, so, and, and so some people are more sensitive, too. Some people's skin is more sensitive. And uh, they are going to react a lot more uh, strongly to an oil. So yeah. it's... Um, is this, do, is there a questionnaire that you have for people if someone comes to you and says, um, Barbara, I'd like you to make me an oil for sinuses? Um, do you ask a certain set of questions like, are you allergic to, you know, whatever? How, you know? Yes. Okay. Yes, well, I, I, I don't consider myself to be somebody who's going to operate in outside of the spectrum that I'm already familiar with. Okay. 
Um, like, I know that you can take golden rod essential oil. I don't know what proportions that you use or how often, but you can also take golden rod and make a tea with it, and they can actually help fight your yeah. allergens. Ingestion. In yes. Ingesting. Okay. But I'm not practiced in that. Okay. So whatever I practiced, mm -hmm. I feel comfortable to practice. Mm -hmm. Whatever I practice and had results with, I feel comfortable to practice. If it's a new person that I've never worked with, I would want to ask them more questions okay. about their sensitivities if they are people who are particularly sensitive. You know, and that and that when you are going to use a new oil or something, you're gonna use an oil for the first time, the place that you try it out on is on the bottom of your feet and you dilute it with some olive oil. That's the okay. most that's the safest way. Okay. You dilute it two drops to a tablespoon and rub it on your feet, and you wait to see if you have any untoward reactions. Okay, that's very, very good to know. That's yeah. very good to know. Another thing is that some people have really strong reactions to certain oils. Um, some people um, cannot tolerate um, basil. Okay. Um, and so, you know, if, 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 if for some reason someone did experience an oil that they had a bad reaction to, I have learned that there is an oil that's very good at neutralizing. Mm -hmm. It's a blend called Harmony. Okay. And I buy it from a company called H. Wisdom. And that has always been a very useful oil to neutralize a, a, an allergic response. Okay. Now, I can't say that that would happen in every case, but it's happened in the cases that I've applied it and used okay. it. So I'm not trying to make a big broad statement and say everyone who can do this mm -hmm. will work. Right. In fact, I'm never saying that at all about essential oils. And a lot of the reason that I'm not is because they are very complex, okay. as are we. Mm -hmm. And that's why it really requires a certain level of experience and practice, sensitivity and caution mm -hmm. to really use them in an appropriate way. Which you feel that you have. Within the, within the realms that I have. Yes. Okay. The things that I have done, I feel like I do have that. Um, I have treated uh, a person recently with kidney stones and um, kidney, uh, like, well, I don't know if he had kidney stones, but he had kidney pain. Okay. So after asking him if he had pus or blood in his urine, and he said no, mm -hmm. then I felt like, and he was not wanting to go to the emergency room for any reason at all. He was okay. going to be willing to die rather than go there. I made a compress for him with uh, two oils and proportions uh, that I thought were safe and made a compress and applied it to the kidney area. And then I gave him uh, some, uh, I gave him some plants that were growing that I had uh, some lemongrass and some leaves of bitter orange tree, which I had, and some rosemary, some garlic, and some oregano, and told him to make a tea with it and just drink the tea for several days, just to make tea and drink it and drink it. And to, then I gave him some little vials of the of the proportions of the of the uh, uh, the, you know, the level of the oils that I wanted him to be able to use for compress and I told him to continue to apply, apply them for like five more days. And the reason I told him that is because I think of it as working like the antibiotics do more or less that you don't want to just start to get it better. You want to finish getting it better. You want to complete. So to the completion. whether there is a, I mean, I have never taken a in-depth certification class on essential oils. Um, I have taken some, a lot of different ones that were offered to CEUs, okay. and I've taken, I've studied them, just studied them, studied them a lot. So, you know, there are things that you need to know when you treat somebody with a kidney issue. Mm -hmm. um, if they have a kidney disease, it's probably not a good idea for them to use some of these oils. Okay. Um, not without a very expertise person with great expertise, like Savvy, 
So those are people I don't, wouldn't want to try to take care of. And I would say, I'm sorry, but you really need to go to the doctor. Okay. You know, but within anything that I've done, and within the parameters that I've done done them in, I have felt like I was practicing a safe form of aromatherapy. Mm -hmm. You know, it's important for people to know that if you get uh, an essential oil on a mucous membrane, that you can't put water on it because it'll make it burn worse. You can only put um, oil to dilute it. So if you've got some accidentally in your eye, you would need to uh, cleanse it with, with a, you know, an oil. I had no idea. And that goes back to when I was a little kid, when we bit into a jalapeno, my mom said, eat a pat of butter. <laughs> Do not drink water. Because it, 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 it makes is, it burn more. It makes it burn more. Yeah. And it's the fat in the um, oils that neutralizes the, the burn. Well, Barbara, if someone were interested, um, and I didn't ask you, but these oils can work for yoga as well. So um, are there blends that you could put together for someone who wants to wear a certain blend during a class? Um, maybe they feel like they they have tighter muscles that week than normal. Is you know, there a I blend? Could, I could do that. I would want to know, I would want to know who I was going to be doing it for. Mm -hmm. I want to ask them a lot of questions, okay. not a lot of questions, but some questions. Okay. Um, I would want to tell them about the safety and the safe use of them. I would want them to know that a person needs to alternate their oils. They shouldn't use the same oils over and over again. Okay. Very much like antibiotics mm -hmm. too. You don't want to use the same antibiotic over and over again, which people do all the time. And as it, most people realize, we have really terrible problem with antibiotics in our country, with super infections, with people not taking them right, and they're almost, I haven't had one in over 40 years, and I don't really hope I never have to take an antibiotic. I mean, I haven't had one in years either, and I hope I never have to take that type of thing again. And, and um, most doctors will tell you that, that they, they really would very often prefer not to order an antibiotic for many situations, but people demand them. Yeah. And people demand things that, um, you know, that they they often, not, often should not, you know. Very good. That's, that's exactly right. So, Barbara, if someone wanted to get in touch with you, uh, well, first of all, we're going to have Barbara's information up on the website, um, uh, email address, phone number, um, and if you needed if you needed more information about Barbara about what Barbara does, then you can contact her, and all of that again will be posted on our website. And so we would like to thank everybody for, for joining us um, this evening. And I would really like to thank Barbara. She is truly a great friend of ours, and um, we consider her uh, the mother of EB. And they're very excited to have her on board. And again, she has many, many talents, so this is not it. Um, so we'd just like to say thank you, and we'll see everybody soon.